our Sunday school lesson for October the 9th, 2016. Lesson 6. We're coming from Unit 2, which is titled The Sovereignty of Jesus. Our lesson title is Planning the Work and Working the Plan. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. And our background scripture is also from Hebrews, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, and also from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 19 through 29. And our printed text is Hebrews, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, and Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 29. And our key verse, This man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who has built a house has more honor than a house. Hebrews 3, 3. Our lesson name, as a result of experience this lesson, that the students should be able to do the following. Remember that Jesus, with divine authority, carried out God's intention. Affirm that Jesus is the model for a life of dedication and service to the will of God and also to dedicate your life to Jesus with a commitment to engage in Christ-centered speech and action. Working, excuse me, planning the work and working the plan. The Book of Romans reveals the necessity of the Christian faith. The book of Hebrews reveals the, super, the superiority of the Christian faith. Hebrews contains a series of contrasts between the good things of Judaism and the better, superior things of Christ. Christ is better than angels, than Moses, than Joshua, than Aaron. The new covenant is better than the Mosaic covenant. The purpose of the book of Hebrews was to com confirm Jewish Christians by showing that the Old Testament Judaism had come to an end through the fulfillment by Christ of the whole purpose of the law. And to warn some who had identified themselves as Christians against falling back into Judaism or pausing short of true faith in Christ. And to bring to the attention of Christians everywhere, even today, the preeminence of Jesus Christ. So we find in verse 1 of our lesson where it states, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the, the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. We are not only brethren, but the brethren of Christ and in him, the brethren to all saints. All the people of God are brothers. Say, for many as believe upon him, talking about Christ Jesus, to them gave them power to become the sons and the daughters of Christ. So we are called holy brethren, not only in profession and title, but in principle and practice in heart and in life. That word holy means that we are to be what? sanctified, that, that, that we are to be set apart for God's use, and that it should be our purpose, that, not, that we are not only 
positionally sanctified in Jesus Christ, but we are to be practically sanctified. That is for us to purposely, in our practice of everyday life, in our heart, we are to to sanctify ourselves, to, 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 to put ourselves in the position to do the things that is pleasing to God, used to be separated for God's purpose and God's alone, and that we are partakers of the heavenly calling. That we are partakers of the means of grace. That is by grace that we are saved. And it is by the spirit of grace that came from heaven. And is by which Christians are effectually called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. 2 Corinthians 4 and 6 states, For God who said, let the light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. That we have been called out of darkness, that we have been illuminated into the glory of God, which is only could be seen in Christ Jesus, who is the apostle and the high priest of our profession. Christ as the apostle of our profession. The word apostle is nowhere else applied to the Lord Jesus except here. The word apostle means one who is sent. Just as God sent Moses to deliver Israel from the bondage of slavery in Egypt, God sent Jesus to deliver mankind from the bondage and slavery and condemnation of sin. For John 3, 17 states, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And that Jesus is not only the apostle, but he is the high priest of our perfection. And that he can save to the other most. Because we have a high priest who has not been touched with our infirmity, but he can sympathize with us. Because he has been tempted in every point as, as we, yet without sin. And therefore... He can say to the uttermost, because we have a high priest that lives forever to make intercession for the saints, to make intercession for you and for me. In verse 2 of our lesson, we find it says, speaking of Christ, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. That he was faithful to him that appointed him. Jesus. Jesus was appointed by God as a mediator. 1 Timothy 2 5 says that for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. God the Father sent him, and Jesus faithfully carried out the appointment just as Moses to his appointment to Israel even in the midst of all their provocation and rebellion. God sent Moses to, to Egypt to, to deliver his people and the people they rebelled, they constantly murmured against Moses they murmured this God, against God but they was faithful. Even our Lord Jesus when he came when he came to give his life as a sacrifice, the very people that he came to save, they murmured, they talked, they, they plotted to, to stone, to kill, and even as he was dying on the cross, and they laughed at him and mocked him, he was so faithful, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do that he was faithful until the end, and that even when salvation 
was paid in full that Christ said that it is finished and he gave up the ghost. Verse 3 tells us in our lesson, for this man Moses, excuse me, for this man Christ, speaking of Christ, was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who had built the house had more honor than the house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. By God, when he was exalted to his right hand, we find in the book of, of Philippians where it said that wherefore God has exalted him and that has given him a name above every name, speaking of Christ, how that he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We find also in, in the book of Acts where it says that in the fourth chapter that there is no other name given un, unto men whereby we must be saved except at the name of Jesus Christ. His name is, is exalted above all the great prophets, Moses. There is no other name that is higher than the name of of Jesus Christ. And to prove this is that God exalted him and set him at his own right hand. It says for he who built the house that is this house this house is not a literal but it is a spiritual house which is the church. The church is the called out ones both of the Old and the New Testament. That word church means called out. And just as the nation, Israel was called out that God called Abraham and, and his descendants and, and Jacob's son, he called them out for a purpose to be a witness to the rest of the world. And so is the New Testament church where the church we are call, called out to be a witness to Jesus Christ. And that and that the building of such a house that is called out for a purpose, a house includes all the preparations and providence and grace needed to furnish this house. We're not talking about a physical house, but we're talking about a spiritual house, which is made up of living stones and fitting servants. Jesus Christ as the founder and establisher in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament is greater than the house established, including the servants. He is greater than Moses who was a servant. Moses as a servant is a portion of the house and he is less than the house. Jesus Christ as the creator of all things, very God himself, and so much greater than the house of which Moses was but a part. Glory is the result of this honor, that Jesus Christ has honor and glory above all that exists. We find in verse 4 where it says that, for every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. But he that built all things is God. We find in the book of Colossians where it says that all things was built by him and for him. Jesus has built all things, therefore he is God. He is very God manifested in the flesh and infinitely above Moses. Speaking here of his building, the church, and of his ordering and managing of that church, and all affairs relating to the church. As far as the constitution of the church, the ordinances in it, 
the, the redemption and the salvation of the members in it and the celebrant of uh, the selling of the worship and the rule and the government of the church jesus christ is the head of the church jesus christ set down the standards that the church is to be governed by in his word not what some man think not what some group think but we are to be governed by what God has plainly stated to us in his word. And that Christ is the head. So then we are to walk as he walked. That we are to follow his instruction and be led by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Not by what we think, what we feel, or what we want. But what God has instructed us. How he has instructed us. And whom he has struck in us by his Holy Spirit that governs and, and rule in the regulations of his church. We find in verses 5 and 6 of our late lesson where it states, And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and rejoice in other hope firm until the end. Moses was a faithful servant for testimony. Moses was to bear witness to the truth, which was to be revealed. He was the instrument of the divine communication to the people by which made by which God made his will known. He did not originate the truths himself, but he was the mere medium by which God made known his truth to his people. He was a mere servant. God has used all through time in the church age men. He has used men to reveal his will to his people. He has used under shepherds to feed and to guide and to tend to his flock. But they are just mere servants. They are not the shepherd. For Psalm 23 say that the Lord is my shepherd. They are under shepherd. Jesus is the chief shepherd. But they are servants that God has called. That he has called to, to, to tend his flock. Not to rule over his flock but to tend his flock. And so, as great as Moses was, Moses was just a servant. And so we need to be mindful that there is none, there is none greater than the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a sad, it is sad, so sad, that today, if you listen to a lot of the Christian airways and radios and TVs, that how rare and how so few times that the name of Jesus Christ and his preeminence is mentioned. They talk about wonders and and and, 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 and harvest and and, and 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 miracles and and and, and uh and, and planting seeds and all, but very seldom Jesus Christ is named as an afterthought. Jesus should have the preeminence of, in everything that we do and say. It's all about Jesus. For the, for the Bible says, "What does a man profit if he 
if he gain the whole world and lose his soul. Jesus said that you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. And the Bible tells that many was offended at that saying. But see, but we want to run after the fish and the loaves, the miracles. But what about Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ, all great men that God has used, they were, they were nothing but servants. God had made them. God, they were just vessels that, that the Father chose to use. And so here in the book of Hebrews, the writer is pointing to the, to the Christians who, who are of Jewish background that Jesus Jesus Christ is superior to all the things that they had known in the Old Testament up under the Mosaic economy, up under the Mosaic dispensation. He, he was better than all the sacrifices. He was better than Moses. He was better than the prophets. He was better than the angels that, 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 that he was the great high priest that he was better than the high priest because the high priest every year had to go and offer a sacrifice for not only the sins of the people but for his sins also but jesus christ offered once and for all times a sacrifice not for himself but for the people that that would go through all generations and saying that after that he had offered that sacrifice that he had set down and that he had not entered into the holy of holies of here in the building on earth but that he had entered into the holies of holies in heaven to the very presence of God and that Jesus that Jesus was was better than all these things and so we find in verse 6 uh, uh, where it states where, but as Christ, as a son over his own house. Moses was faithful as a servant in the house. Jesus was faithful as the firstborn son over the house, of which he is the heir and the governor, that we are joint heirs with Christ. Here then is the conclusion of the argument in reference to Christ's superiority over Moses. Moses did not form the house or family. Christ did. Moses was but in the house or one of the family. Christ was over the house as its ruler. Moses was but a servant in the house, Christ was the son in the heir. Moses was in the house of another, Christ in his own house. Who house we are? We are Christians. We Christians, as the church and family, he Christ is the head and the and the governor and God is the father. We are his house. We are his possession. And if we hold fast to confidence, that is if they turn not back, turn not back, reaching back to get other things, but our righteousness is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. We don't need to hold on to, to no laws, to no, no uh, 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 days, no, no new moon. But all that we need to hold on is to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ and that, and that if we hold on to him, you know, we have a hope, a confidence of eternal life Jesus Christ and that we will rejoice in the hope and firm until the end Christ said that all that come to him he will in no wise 
cast out. He said that we are in his hands and in his hands and in his hands is in the Father's hands and no man can pluck us out. He said that we have eternal life in him. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I, I would have told you so. Jesus said that he is going away to prepare a place for us. And that if he go away, that he would come back again to re receive us unto himself. Jesus Christ is our hope. That is our confidence. Our confidence that one day that we going to be with him throughout all eternity. And so we find further in our lesson as we go to the Gospel of Matthews where it states, Therefore, whosoever hear the sins of mine and do them, I liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that hear these sayings of mine and doeth them shall be likened. Excuse me. And every one that hear these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon sand. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as described. Here we have in the seventh chapter of Matthew, which is ending the Sermon on the Mount, which, which Jesus gave in chapter 5, 6, and 7. And so after giving them the Sermon on the Mount, which, which referred to the government and the citizens, of the kingdom of heaven, how it would be ruled, and, and, and how the people shall conduct themselves. After all this, Jesus says to them that he says that that those who hearing first and doing is the way. That 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 we are not only to be hearers of the word, that but doers of the word hearing first and doing and working the plan the rock on which he hears or believeth that rock on which that man built his house is Jesus Christ and there is no other foundation that any man can lay and that being in him we are safe and secure in time and eternity that there will be storms that gonna come and that even storms that 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 gonna come some of us might already be in the midst of the storm or just coming out of a storm and heading towards another storm but if we are in him that we have a refuge, a refuge that Jesus Christ is our refuge. He's our safe haven out of the storms. And that we have what? A shelter in him. Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And that, and that we have a shelter in him and that he abides forever. 
The Rock. So shall we abide. As as long as he abide, so shall we abide. And that Christ is the solid rock on which we stand. And all other ground is seeking sin. And everything else which is not Christ or Christ centered is seeking sin. Are you standing on your denomination? Are you standing on 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 uh, your uh, nationality? Are you standing on your wealth? Are you standing on on who you know, who your pastor is, or or, or whoever? If you're not standing on Jesus Christ, all other things is seeking sin. And so Christ was telling them that those who hear his words and do and do them is considered as a wise man. And those who hear him not is considered as foolish. Those who put all on something that was not stable. And so we see that such teaching and such unfolding of the purpose of God that they have never heard before. That the Pharisees and the scribes disputed together and expressed their, their human opinion. But here's one that spent with authority so that the multitude were astonished and that they said that they have never seen or heard one that has spoke like this before. The one for he taught them as one having authority. And he could do that because he was the very foundation. That Jesus Christ was very God manifested in the flesh. And he said that all that hear my words, not just to not just to listen to them where they pass through, but to hear his word, to be believe upon them. And to act upon them, we shall have eternal life. May the Lord bless you and keep you.